Good afternoon, welcome back to Bean Energy. I got a new charge controller and I wanted to test it out and walk through some of the features of it. Use case here, well, charge controller. You wanted to know what charge controller was. It's this guy. You may have seen this one before. Um, this is not the most powerful charge controller out there and uh, it's, it's kind of odd in a way. So I just wanted to go through that real quick. But my use case that I was thinking about was a golf cart. Um, I've seen some people do it and um, I would like to get a golf cart and throw a solar panel on top. One thing that um, throws me off though is that your charge controllers are typically, for an MPPT charge controller, you keep your solar panel voltage uh, significantly higher than your highest battery voltage. So if you've got a 48 volt gar golf cart, then you're going to be hitting 50 something volts. You, you can get solar panels that are up in that range, um, but they're not very common. Usually the, the, the 60 cells are 30 something volts and then the 72 cells are up in the 45 to 48 volts. Open circuit, right? So that doesn't really work well for a typical MPPT charge controller. So then you're looking at boost charge controllers, which is fine. You can get MPPT boost charge controllers, such as this one. But then you've got to keep your solar panel voltage below your battery. It doesn't work if it's above the battery. Um, and so I bought this one just to see how it would react and I was pleasantly surprised because it will actually charge either way, whether the solar panel voltage is lower or higher and I wanted to show you guys that. So, let's do it. All right, so first things first are setting up this charge controller. You can just go read the manual and skip this part if you want. But here's what I did. You'll see here when you first turn it on is you should have the battery voltage there, you should have the panel voltage there. Um, mine is already set to 10 amps. Um, this here is which uh, profile you're using. So. I have not been able to get it to boot on anything other than zero, zero. You can go in here and set which one you want, um, but that's after it turns on. So what I did is I just edited zero, zero to be what I want. So in order to change, oh, I turned it on. So in order to change the settings, you hit set until you get to your number. So you set your battery voltage here. So mine's 54.6 and then you hit set, you set the charge rate. I just went ahead and set it to maximum of 10 amps, but you can uh, limit that. Um, there are a bunch more settings that I haven't messed with in here, but for charging, that should be all you need to set. And then you just hit okay. And then right down here, you see the unlock button, you see the off. So in order to turn it on and start charging, you gotta hit okay. So then what we've got here is it shows you that it's in constant current mode. And that's because with it charging, it is not up to the 54.6 volts yet. Um, this takes a little while to, to grab onto its wattage. I don't know why it takes anywhere near this long. Um, the other charge controllers that I've seen have always been near instantaneous. This one seems to take 30 or 40 seconds to get up to wattage, which for a stationary application shouldn't really be that big of a deal. I suppose when a cloud comes over, it's got to readjust a little bit. Um, but solar panels are relatively cheap. I figure you could just throw a little larger one in there if you really have to. Uh, for this use case, I don't, I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. It will keep track of your amp hours charged. And if you set your amp hours, I think I've got mine set to 16. Um, actually, maybe it's set to a lot lower than that right now because my battery's charging pretty quick. It will, it will charge up here and show you that you got a full battery. So you can set your amp hours. Um, so here we go. Um, we're charging. We're hitting 155 watts. And it's working beautifully. It's doing its MPPT charging, just like it's supposed to. So the next piece is going to be showing you that this can, in fact, charge with the solar panel being a higher voltage than the battery. And to me, that's important for golf carts. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. So let's do that next. All right, so you've seen what it can do charging where the solar panel is a lower voltage than the battery. So now what we do is I'm gonna connect this to a pair of six volt golf cart batteries. We've got 12 volts. I'm gonna set the, the charge controller up at 13 volts and we will see that it still charges. 
So you can see that it's brought the voltage of the panel down to 14.7 instead of being up in the high 30s and it's, it's set point for voltage on the battery is 13.7. Still getting 96 watts off of that panel too, which is pretty good because um, that panel's rated for about nine amps in total, so that makes sense. So what that means to me is the charge controller will work as an MPPT solar charge controller if the solar panel voltage is lower than the battery voltage. As soon as that flips and the solar panel voltage is higher than the battery, then it basically acts as a PWM charge controller, which is fine. Like if I had a, with this panel, it runs at about 35, 36 volts. So if I had a 36 volt golf cart and I had this panel on top, then if I let the batteries get too low, then this charge controller would still be able to charge it. It would just be at a reduced rate, which would be fine, until it reached that threshold where the solar panel was at a lower voltage than the battery. And then it would speed up and it'd be MPPT. And I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't be stuck with, oh, the battery's too low, I got to push the cart over and do a manual charge on it. Um, if it got too low, then the solar panel could still charge it. Anyway. I thought that was a really cool use case. The next thing we're gonna look at is the efficiency of this versus um, this PAL Mr. 60 amp charge controller that I have and what kind of numbers we get off of each. Now, the differences is, I mean, obviously the cost, like this 10 amp charge controller is pretty inexpensive. Um, the PAL Mr. is about a hundred bucks and it's a 60 amp too. Um, but of course the PAL Mr. does the higher voltage solar panel to the lower voltage battery and the, this little 10 amp MPPT does it the other way around, lower voltage solar, and it boosts to the battery voltage. Let's check out the efficiency. This here is my 325 watt solar panel. And we've got that running right now over to our, our little green MPPT charge controller. It's sitting happy at about 155 watts and it is like 5 in the afternoon right now, so not not too bad, right? In the other corner is our Power Mis Power Mister solar charge controller running to a pair of golf cart batteries. So let's just take a look at the voltage here, or not the voltage, let's take a look at the wattage that we're pulling off this panel with our green MPPT charge controller. So we're at 155 watts. So we're gonna swap the solar wires over to the Palmister and see what it's getting over there. Then we're gonna walk right over here. So we were getting 155, and now we are getting almost 200 watts, 199 watts from the Palmister. So I would say this is definitely a little more efficient. But you know what? Let's not trust the output of this guy. Let's check the amperage and voltage and make sure that it's actual and not just the readouts of each that are odd. All right, so we're at 13.8. 13 amps, 200 watts. Let's go ahead and swap over to voltage here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. 13.47 volts, and we will throw the wattage number for that up on the screen. Now let's run over and do this same test with the same multimeter on the other charge control. All right, so there we are, right back up at 155 watts. And let's see what we're showing here. So 2.6 amps, and let's see how many volts we're at. So I've hooked my leads right up to the battery. 52.8 volts. Let's see what that adds up to. 
So I suppose, not unexpectedly, both of the charge controllers are a little optimistic on how much power they're putting out. Maybe they're measuring on the input side, not the output side. I don't know. But, definitely the Palmister is a little more efficient. So it was at 148 compared to 170 something. Um, I don't really care. They're kind of two different use cases. Um, I might look around for another boost charge controller. But the fact that it's a boost charge controller and it'll do the PWM when needed, it's pretty neat. I feel like you kind of get the best of both worlds there, being able to be in a, uh, a wide range of situations and still be able to use it. So it's only 10 amps, um, but maybe that's enough. Anyway, that's all I had for this round of testing. If you had some other tests that you think I should run or maybe some other use cases for this little MPPT charge controller, throw that down in the comments. Let's discuss it. See y'all next time.